Beyond the regular assembly mates like Coincident and Concentric, there's a cool mechanical mate called Rack and Pinion. First off, let's look at this standard way of using this mate with the regular Rack and Pinion. Start a new assembly, then open the design library and choose the toolbox. If the toolbox isn't added in, add it in. Now we'll choose ANSI inch, power transmission, gears. Drag and drop in a spur gear. The actual settings aren't super important right now, but if you haven't used the toolbox gears before, I highly recommend playing around with them and seeing how the gear changes. Once the settings are defined, we can add in as many gears as we want, but we only need one. Now go back into the toolbox and drop in a rack. For these settings, we'll keep the diametral pitch and pressure angle the same as the gear. The gear is the first component in the assembly, so it's fixed, but we need it to rotate, so we'll make it float. Now for the sake of demoing this mate, I'll go to the right plane and sketch a circle and make it fixed. Now we'll concentrically mate the gear to the circle. This effectively creates a mounting point for the gear. In an actual assembly, your rack and pinion will presumably be mounted to other components, so this sort of thing won't be necessary. Now we'll mate the faces of the rack and pinion to line them up. Next, move the rack so that the teeth mesh with the gear. Then use a distance mate to set that. Now comes the rack and pinion mate. For the rack, we simply choose the straight edge of the rack. The pinion is a bit more complicated. It's not exactly clear what to choose for that. What you want to do is go into the gear part and show the sketch for the tooth cut. You'll see two circles in this sketch. The outer circle gives the correct pinion pitch diameter. Hit OK and the rack and pinion is ready to go. Pretty cool, right? So that's the obvious way to use a rack and pinion, but there are other cool ways to use it. Check this out. What's effectively happening is that the rack and pinion mate is being used to translate rotational motion into translational motion. Here's how it works. I'll suppress the rack and pinion mates. Now for the rack, I'll choose the edge of this block, and for the pinion, I'll choose an edge of this cylinder. Pretty cool, and it's not just limited to rectangular edges. Choose the straight edge on this cylinder as the rack, and use the same pinion. It's really pretty awesome. All you need is a straight and circular edge, and you can encode it in this way. Here's a fun example, it's a glue stick. Again, it's just the rotation of the knob being translated into linear motion of the glue. There are so many creative ways you can use this mate. It's really powerful and super easy to set up. Give it a try.